So this is Ali. And, you know, it's really cool to bring on someone like Ali because your girl, you do boxing, but you've also been in some interesting situations, right? And we love talking about kind of street situations and self-defense, etc. And so, yeah, Ellie, um, did you grow up in the LA area? Yeah, I grew mm -hmm. up in uh, Downey, California. Downey, California. Mm -hmm. So, um, the the area you grew up in was it? Did it have some dangerous areas, some sketchy areas? I wouldn't. There's a problem I think with drug dealing and more recently kidnapping oh, wow. within the past couple of years, mm -hmm. where they um, kidnapped a grown man like right outside of Walmart. Wow. Yeah, but overall, I'd say Downey is a pretty safe city. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. So. Um, um, before we started this talk, you mentioned this, you know, one time there was some person who followed you home. Now, were you in Downey at the time or was that somewhere else? I was in Downey. Okay, yeah. wow. And so you were kind of just walking a dog and then someone was just following you? Oh, no, that was something else. Oh, that was something else. Yeah. Okay. But I see. Um, the Downey situation was um, for anybody who knows the area. I went to Downey High School mm -hmm. and um, I was on my way home from the Ralph's right there. I had just gotten food and there's a Coca-Cola factory. And it's kind of like an industrial street called Cleta. Mm -hmm. And there's a um, there is a an alleyway. You have to hop a fence, walk through the alleyway, which is like 200 feet long, surrounded by businesses. Nobody's going to see you. There's no cameras. Mm -hmm. And then at the other end was the street I lived on. Okay. Um, way back. And so I was probably 17 or 18 at the time. And I was like, man, I'm carrying these groceries. I don't want to walk all the way around to get to my street. And my dad always told me, Ali, don't go there. He told my brother to don't go there. You're going to get in trouble. Something's mm -hmm. going to happen. I was like, whatever, dad, like, <laughs> you know, and I'm holding on to the gate. It's a chain link fence to climb it. And there was a guy on a bike and I just hear ding, ding. And I turn, he's like, Hey, and I was like, Oh my gosh. Like, I just was like, thank goodness. I did not climb over. I would have been alone. Mm -hmm. And, um, the guy I see. Started, so oh. you were, um, you were, on this side of the fence, the guy was on the other side of the fence. No, we were on the same side. We were oh. on the street side. We were, he was not in the alleyway. I see. I Neither see. of us were in the alleyway. I was, like, about to climb two hands, one foot on, like, starting to climb up. And uh, that's when he came up from behind. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. wow. So ding, ding, and he's like, hey, what are you up to? Yeah, and he just wanted to really talk to me. And I was. he's like, what's your name? Where are you going? You know, what school do you go to? Mm. You know, just really wanting to get this information from me. And he kept getting closer to me mm. and just kept following me with his bike. And I was like, okay, I can't run because it's a bike. Um, I can't go home because I don't want him to know where I live. There's, uh, there's a downy landing and that's a bunch of businesses. I'm like, okay, I'll go there and I'll ask for help, something like that. Um, and then eventually he just goes, oh, have a nice day. Wow. And I, as he yeah. was following you? As he's following me. Wow. Home, yeah. And so I was almost scared to go home because I didn't know if he was still watching me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think um, uh, one thing we're learning from Ali's mm -hmm. story is one of the most important things is if someone's following you, don't go home. Mm -hmm. Right? You don't want to know where they live. That You don't want them to know where you live. Mm -hmm. uh, I had someone follow me home back in the day, too. I mean, he, he I didn't show him my home. But I just, I walked... I lived pretty close to a college. So I just walked mm -hmm. on to the college campus and there's security everywhere. So I'm like, dude, this dude's following me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, yeah, if I go home, he's going to know where I lived. And I had these stupid housemates back in the day. I don't know why I lived with them. I know why, because my rent was only 400 <laughs> But you you reap what you sow, right? Mm -hmm. So they never locked the door either. So if I went home, that guy would have like come into our home yeah. all the time. That guy's eyes were bloodshot and everything. So so the your story actually has an epilogue because you saw this yeah. guy later. So he must have been local to the area because um, I worked at a Cold Stone Creamery and I'm about to enter work and this guy comes out of the Cold Stone and I, I freaked out. I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy knows where I work now. It was obvious I was going to work. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. guy knows where I work. Um, I don't know, was he stalking me? Did he already know beforehand? But thankfully it turned out that he was just there to go mess with the people at Chili's and mm. stole a Chili's cup. Um, cops came, asked me what was happening with me told them real quick and they're like okay cool and uh i think they ended up apprehending him for the stuff he did at chili's i don't know mm -hmm. no tr nothing happened with him following me I which see. i mean i don't know what the cops could have done yeah. about that yeah so. and when you saw him the second time he actually gave you a hug oh too, yeah. Right? yeah he grabbed me and he hugged me and Oof. just was like oh you're so nice this and that and it just i didn't know what to do do i hit this guy do i what do I do? Like, yeah. he knows where I am. I don't want to make him angry. Like, yeah. I, he knows where I work now. And I just, I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were people around me. So had he hurt me, I think people would have jumped in. And then 
luckily the cops were on their way, so if he had tried anything, at least the cops were already on yeah. their way. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so after that incident, you did Taekwondo, right? Yeah, you, after that, yeah. Um, I went to my grandmother. I lived with my grandmother. I still live with her, and I told her, Grandma, like, I need to go learn how to kick butt. Um, before that, when I was still in high school, I did know how to wrestle, but I felt like that wasn't going to help me. Um, and I think, I do, th I believe strongly in wrestling, but in that moment, I was like, no, I want to learn how to strike somebody and really yeah, yeah. defend myself. And um, so that's when I went into Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was your experience doing Taekwondo? Was it, did you feel like you learned some good stuff or is it kind of like, uh, I want to learn something more? Uh, so Taekwondo, I think Taekwondo is great um, to get into martial arts, I think in self-defense. Um, but if somebody is there trying to beat you up, maybe you get into a bar fight or something, I don't know how well Taekwondo is going to help. Yeah. Um, and that's not to say Taekwondo is not a great um, sport. I, I think it's super fun and it's um, really good for you. Um, but it, it definitely built confidence in me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and confidence goes a long way because mm -hmm. people who are trying to cause trouble, they're usually looking for the lowest common denominator. They're mm -hmm. looking for the person they can pick on, right? Same thing with bullies. It's all like that. So probably the after doing Taekwondo, you walked around differently. You just you know yeah, and <laughs> it, you probably had more muscle and everything. So like people weren't gonna mess with you as much anymore. No, like mm. I want to say in high school, nobody really messed with me. Like I, I had a lot of people who kind of knew like oh she likes to work out and like get strong. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to say there wasn't a lot of like trouble with me at high school. It was just that out that external experience. Yeah, the external. Mm -hmm. Wow. What about that time um, uh, when you were walking the dog? Was that So that was earlier in your life? No. So that that was actually last year um, oh. at the beginning of the lockdown. Um, I had lost my job. And so I was walking a neighbor's dog every morning. And I was on my way home. And um, I had since moved from Downey to an area that wasn't as safe. Um, I see. And it's definitely has a lot more crime. Mm -hmm. um, and this guy started following me home. And he started yelling at me. And I had a... The dog was big. The dog mm -hmm. was part Rot Rottweiler. Yeah. Um, and that, at this point, you were already doing Taekwondo and everything. And yeah, you had the wrestling experience. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I, I just got really mad. And I was like, wow, this guy really wants to follow me home. And I, I told him, no, leave me alone. And he just was yelling at me and gaining on me. And wow. he followed me for a mile. Wow. Because I'd walk the dog a little over a mile out and then a mile back. And... Mm -hmm. um, as I started getting closer to my house, I'm thinking about the businesses and where can I go? What can I do? Um, cops patrol the area frequently, so maybe I can flag down a cop. I don't know what to do. But um, a man who was sitting at the bus stop, he saw what was going on and he stood up and told the guy, hey, she doesn't want to talk to you. And he, he stopped that guy. Wow. And I was so grateful for that guy, um, the man sitting at the bus stop. Yeah. Like, he really helped me out. Yeah. And I was wow. upset about the situation, but, you know, that guy... I'll always be grateful for that guy, yeah, no yeah. matter what. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess this there's there's a few lessons I'm learning from this. One is that no matter where you are, know some places that you could go to that are safe. Right. Mm -hmm. So like whatever neighborhood you're in or whatever new neighborhood you move to, know where maybe one of the stores are or if you can, if there's a police station nearby, know where that is. Just know where there are places in case you're in a pinch and you don't you can't go home. Where can you go to? Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm learning from this. And the other thing is sometimes if you like talk a little, you know, a lot of times and I used to be like that, too. Mm -hmm. If there was something sketchy, I'd be like, if I ignore it, it'll go away. Mm -hmm. But, like, you got to interact with it. If it's sketchy, you got to let it know. You don't want to be, you don't want to fear being annoying or fear being, mm -hmm. you know, a hassle, right? So, like, um, that guy was following you, mm -hmm. and you were talking back to him. Hey, leave me alone. I'm sure that deterred him a little. If you just, like, pretend he didn't exist, he might have just charged you, man. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That guy... I, I did, because I actually didn't know he was following me the first maybe quarter of a mile. Oh. I just wasn't aware of directly behind me. I I, I'd like to think I'm a, a, a pretty aware person, but apparently not, mm -hmm. um, because this guy followed me for like a quarter of a mile, and then the rest of the three quarters until I was almost home. So, you know, I didn't interact with him the first half, and he was yelling at me. Mm. So I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Um, and that's a really good lesson, too, about situational mm -hmm. awareness, right? Because I had a very similar situation. One time I was riding the subway, and I wasn't, I didn't think that I wasn't aware of what was behind me. Somebody came up to me and just like tapped me. I was like, hey, what's up? I turned, I was like, wow, how did I not see him? You know, at this point I was training a lot. I thought, oh, I would know when someone's behind me, but he, he, he snuck up on me. Like, and I think in his mind, he's like, oh, if this were another, I would have hit him in the head. Mm -hmm. and I would have been hit in the head, man. 
So yeah, it's it's crazy. Situational awareness is so important, and mm-hmm. the the key is just to learn from it. Like you know, I'm not gonna say I'm always situationally aware, but yeah, in your situation, it's like you walk for about half a quarter of a mile before you notice he was behind yeah. you, and then he started shouting. Yeah, once wow. I noticed him, that's when he started shouting at me. Wow. That's so bizarre too. It's mm-hmm. like he's like secret of light, and then okay, you notice, yeah. and then he starts shouting. Yeah, and it was uh, it was interesting. It made me really mad. Yeah, it made me angry that somebody wanted to follow me home. Yeah, maybe to harm me, maybe to do something else, and I didn't do anything. I yeah. just walked a dog. You know, I was just trying to get my five dollars. You know, yeah, for yeah that exactly, job. exactly. So, you know, it's that's the unfortunately that's the life. That's the world we live in. Yeah. And um, the most we can do right now is be aware. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And props to that guy at the bus stop, too, for also speaking out. Yeah. Man, he did put himself at risk because the guy could have, like, lashed onto mm-hmm. him, too. But I guess he, he did a calculated kind of decision. Yeah. But also be careful of that, too, right? If you're going to, if you don't want to be a bystander, you want to get involved, make sure you know the risks, too. Mm-hmm. And hopefully the guy at the bus stop, you know, he, he thought about the risks. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And these both happened in broad daylight. Yeah. Like this one of them was at one something and the other was in the morning. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. I see. So mm-hmm. and I think um another reason to bring Ali on is because I think a lot of times um women should think about this a lot, about safety and stuff and, a lot, and this stuff is not really emphasized mm-hmm. in kind of discussions, right? Um, I mean, even where I live, I see a lot of women on their phones or really late at night like walking through alleys or something like that and I'm just like, hmm. Are you sure you want to be doing that? So, yeah, these are all things to think about. And now, Ali, you do boxing. You're, yeah. You do boxing. Um, how does the boxing compare to the, the, the Taekwondo? Oh, I love boxing. Boxing is my sport. Like, mm-hmm. That's it. I've been doing it for, like, five or six months now. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is nothing like it. Like, that... That's what I love. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I want to go back to Taekwondo one day and uh, get my black belt and proceed. But um, boxing is, that's my sport. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And I think this opens up a final segue, which is that it's sometimes a little difficult for you, right, to train with people. Because sometimes people will, will like, forget that, you know, you, you're your girl and you're a little shorter and they'll, like, hit crack you hard, right? It happens <laughs> sometimes. Mm-hmm. And yeah. there's, there's a good discussion about training, too. And when those situations happen, do you try to tell them, hey, can you can you slow down or can you go softer? Or what what takes place when that happens? No, I'm pretty prideful. Okay. <laughs> so uh, when I get rocked, um, because I, I would love, we talked about this earlier, I'd love to compete and have amateur com- competitions. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I get rocked, I'm like, don't show it. Mm-hmm. But, and that's what I like to do. Maybe that's not the best way to spar. You know, people are going to have their opinions, but mm-hmm. that's what I like to do personally. Um but if usually the guys I train with, if they ever do notice, they stop mm. and they know like, let me back up, let me stop, like, cause she's gonna keep going. I need to stop. So the men I spar with are pretty well controlled. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So when they rock me and if they notice, they will stop and say, "Are you okay?" Mm-hmm. and check on me. So mm-hmm. that's good. That's yeah. good. And I think um, that's something that as a sparring partner. Mm-hmm. You have a responsibility too, right? Uh, I always try to check with the people I spar with. Like if I hit them, I'm like, oh, is that okay? I'm, I mean, I don't have to, but I think it's good etiquette. And I wish more people did that back, you know. And sometimes people will hit too hard and you have to tell them. And But that's actually a good practice too. Like don't be afraid to be annoying. Mm-hmm. Look, can you slow down? Can you not spar as hard? Like you have to do that. It's your own protection. It's mm-hmm. Protection. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a good thing to emphasize too. And then um, it's awesome that you want to... Uh, do some matches and stuff Thank like you. that, and we'll definitely uh, be rooting for you and bring you back when um, the time comes. Awesome. Thank so, you. Yeah, definitely. Um, something else, too, was we touched on it together about um, women and defense and uh, getting sparring partners and knowing what it feels like to get hit and what it feels like. Because the first time I got hit, I got this was um, me sparring with an ex, um, and he accidentally hit me too hard. I saw stars. That was the first mm. time I'd ever seen stars. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. I've yeah. never felt this before. Yeah. But after, I was like, oh, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm here. Yeah. So that gave me confidence, too. Like, I can get hit and keep going. Um, and I think that's important for women. I'm not saying that anybody who does um, 
combat sports has to always spar but I think you should at least get one or two spars in so you know yeah. what it feels like to be grabbed hard. Yeah. You know what it feels like to get hit, yeah. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know how vulnerable you are in a fight, too. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, unfortunately our hands are only this long, right? Yeah. We, I wish we had four hands so you could protect your... And then the other ones can protect your body, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately that's not how our bodies work. So it, it makes you appreciate not just how your body works, but also... The body is stronger in a lot of ways than we think, right? There's a reason our ancestors hunted freaking mammoths and stuff like that, right? If we were weak, we wouldn't be able to hunt mammoths, right? right? So uh, taking one or two punches is okay. Now, you know, getting hit a thousand times in the eye is probably not a good yeah. idea. But, you know, you can take a few punches, especially if you train yourself up to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's something very important. And whatever martial art, exactly like Ali says... You don't have to be like fighting until you're brain damaged, but you should get a little bit of experience of what it's like if you get hit in the stomach or if mm -hmm. you get hit once in the face or something like that. Or else it's not martial. Yeah. So, Ellie, thank you so much for joining us. This was an awesome thank conversation. You. Yeah. And Ellie, we'll be back, guys. Thank you, guys.